How to speak to foreclosure victims. Hi, this is Julia M. Spencer. I'm a real estate advisor, investor, and your number one source for real estate advice online. Now, don't take my word for it. Go to my website today. It's at the bottom of this video, juliamspencer.com. Don't forget the M in the middle. Go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter there. I offer all kinds of really good advice on investing in real estate. I have a wealth of many, many years of information and I want to teach you what I know because I have accumulated this knowledge with very hard work over many, many years and I've made many mistakes and I want to avoid you having to make those mistakes that I did. So this particular video is on the question of how do you talk to foreclosure victims? And this question came about on one of my other videos where I basically show how I purchased this property at a tax sale foreclosure. It was extremely cheap, it was about $3,000. And um, I basically purchased the property and just talk about blah, 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 everything about this property. And one of the subscribers and, and people that watch my YouTube videos actually asked me, won't the owner be angry when you talk to them? And how do you handle that? So here I want to give you some of my um, first-hand experience. I'm really actually glad that I get questions like this because this is the kind of stuff that is not written down in any kind of formal audiobooks or courses. This is very specific, detailed, real-world stuff that you actually will not get anywhere else unless you subscribe to my newsletter or listen to my audiobooks because I've actually have been there and I have done that. And I have the t-shirt to prove it even, if you want to almost say that. But uh, my YouTube videos all focus on real world stuff, stuff that I've really done. You can go on my Facebook page, you can go on Twitter, you can go on Link to get to see my resume, and you can talk to other people that have purchased my audiobooks. And you can purchase them yourself and make up your own opinion on how I have dealt with problems like this and similar problems like this. So this particular subscriber asked if the original owner isn't going to be mad that I bought their house for very cheap. Now from experience and all the tax sale foreclosures that I've ever bought, I've actually always tried to desperately find the owner. A lot of times the owner is missing um, or the owner has died, unfortunately. And um, people, descendants of the um, person that used to own the property um, are not interested in it. They, um, they usually the properties are in, in need of repair and need of maintenance. And there's also outstanding tax bills beyond what the place has been auctioned for and fees. So a lot of times these are properties that are actually deserted. And it's amazingly so, but people don't want to put the effort in advertising them and trying to put them up for sale and going through all that process because um, they just don't want to deal with it. For example, I had um, one piece of property that I purchased from a person who had over 40 rental properties in that particular town, 40, that's four, zero. Now, two thirds of those were in such bad shape that they're actually almost close to um, not being repairable. They're probably condemned by the city or by the county and had to be torn down. So for the um, descendants of this particular person who died, uh, this was a huge, huge burden. I mean, they really just didn't even, it would have cost them money to just even advertise them for sale. They just want to be rid of it. They sign a paper saying that they decline their inheritance and all the liens and debt that come with it. And they basically just walk away. And these properties are a lot of times are in no man's land. Now, the one time that I did actually meet with a lady that was about to or has lost her house and I was in, in very good um, talks with her. She was um, very emotional about losing the property. It's been in her family for many, many years since she was a little child. And she really just wanted to sell the property and everybody that she's talked to gave her really lowball offers and she just felt like she was an elderly lady and she felt like her mother who was the one that purchased the property back in the day and has maintained it and has kept it in the family all these years she felt that um, her mother deserved a little bit more than when she was being offered for the property and so she was holding on to it she was actually periodically driving there and just sitting on the porch and crying 
you know, thinking of her mother. And she said to me, "Is like, Julia, if you can sell this property and just give me at least this amount, then yes, you know, I'll sign a quit claim deed. We don't have to do the whole process of barring somebody's redemption rights because I'm not going to try to redeem it or anything like that. I just want to settle my debt on the taxes and I want to honor my deceased mother, the grandmother, obviously, with at least some sort of money. So in that case, what we actually did is I found the buyer. Um, she um, sold the property to that buyer and she paid me off. So I, I stepped out of that equation and um, basically just made the money on the on the premium, the 20% premium here in Georgia the, on the lien. And she was able to sell the property and get the, exactly the amount that she wanted to have. So she was happy, the new buyer was happy, and I was happy, I felt like I did her good deed. So the original owners, I've, you know, whenever I try to reach them, they're not reachable or not interested or don't care about it, or else they're just, there isn't any. So, so far I've not had to deal with any angry owners, and I take that back actually. One time when I purchased the property, I got a call from one of the descendants of this lady who had died that owned the property, and I believe it was her son possibly, or maybe a grandson, and he called me maybe like two days after the auction, and he seemed very excited and upset, and he basically said, Julia, please, um, uh, why did you buy my property? I want my property back. And basically I told him then is like, just go and pay the taxes. And it's a small premium here in the state of Georgia. It's 20%. Most credit cards have higher interest rates than that. So um, just redeem it. You have a whole year to do so and I will wait. There's nothing I can do to your property while I'm waiting. And let me know if you want it back. You can have it back. And a third time when I spoke to a different set of owners of a property that I purchased, the situation was such that the property was owned by a um, mom and dad, the dad died, then the mother died, and then there was children. And all the children were adult children. There was four of them, I believe, and they basically all joined, jointly owned this property. Now the problem with that was that nobody felt that they're responsible to maintain it and they were just using it. So sometimes this person would stay there, sometimes this person would stay there. And there was really only one one sibling out of the four and her son who are the ones that really, really wanted to keep the property in in the family and actually really, I mean, they really worked hard to get the money together to redeem the property and they redeemed the property on the last day. And they were very grateful that I was working with them, that I was waiting for them, that I had no problems with them redeeming it, that I explained the process to them, that I wasn't gonna screw them over or anything. And they were also grateful that I actually purchased the property without anybody bidding against me, which that's a big thing, because if you buy a tax sale foreclosure and it's maybe $10,000 and somebody comes in and bids over that amount, that's where we get into overage investing, which is a different topic. But basically, if that person pays twenty or $30,000, now the 20% premium is now owed on the amount that was actually paid. So to come up with 20% of $10,000 is a different number game than coming, um, getting a 20% premium together on a $30,000 purchase, which a lot of people can't do. So that being said, that particular family was also extremely happy that I was patient, that I explained the process to them, that I had no problem giving the property back to them, that I waited for them, that we had um, arranged a good meeting spot for them that they could get to, and they were actually very interested in just being able to sell the property to me. Now, at the time, I didn't, wasn't interested in it, didn't want to purchase it, but they actually really just wanted to work with me. So a lot of times, instead of having owners that lose their property be angry at you or upset at you, of course, don't walk around on their property or anything unless you're allowed to. But a lot of times they're actually very grateful that finally somebody's coming to relieve them of this property. And that, of course, only if they're actually present because a lot of times they're not present anymore, not amongst the living any, any longer. So for more information like this, this is the kind of stuff you can't actually get from a book. This is real life experience right here that you're getting. So go to my website, juliamspencer.com, subscribe there. 
Make sure you purchase my audiobooks there, especially if you're interested in tax sale foreclosure investing. I have an audiobook on that. Purchase that, write some notes, and start asking questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'm a little bit behind on my stack of questions, but I will get to every message that I get, every question, and I hope to see you investing very successfully soon. Have a great day. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliammspencer.com.